Pixel Art Academy is a game about drawing where you literally have to draw to progress through the story. So it made sense to build an in-game drawing tool for it. Just like the game, it runs in the browser and constantly autosaves to the server as you use it. Every pixel you change gets directly updated in the database. This means that as I draw on my end, another player could be observing me and see the process. They could even be playing the snake game that I'm drawing, and the artwork would update in real time as they play. Another feature that I wanted for my drawing tool was infinite undo and redo. This is very convenient and it would also allow me to create time lapses of your drawings. The only problem is that storing every change takes a significant amount of space. It works fine for the small in-game sprites, but I'm also using the same system for my internal sprite editor. This again works well for small images, but as I was trying to draw bigger artworks with it, I started hitting the 16 megabyte limit for objects stored in the database. In-game sprites are stored simply as a collection of pixels, each pixel with its own data such as the X and Y coordinate, palette color and the normal direction. It's all stored in my database's native JSON format, which allows for easy updates to the database, but is hugely inefficient space-wise. Even more so, as I was also storing all the undo and redo history that way. Three years ago, I started writing a new tool to draw location backgrounds. So I knew I needed to upgrade my approach and more compactly store the data. To support bigger artworks, I needed a binary representation of the image. In the new system, each property like the color resides inside a big grid of values. While this wastes memory for pixels that don't exist, such data is easily compressible and takes significantly less space in storage. But there was a downside. Because the whole grid was now stored in compressed chunks, I couldn't easily store my undo and redo changes as database operations on individual pixels. Pressed for time, I temporarily put rewriting this functionality on hold and three years later I still don't have a working undo button. Now that I'm updating my engine from the bottom up, it's finally time to add this functionality. With the exception of the storage format, the architecture of the previous system worked great, so I decided to stick with it. Every action that is performed with the editor is recorded as a sequence of changes that need to be applied to the old image state to arrive at a new one. This technique, known as data differencing, saves a lot of space since it doesn't require the whole image state to be recorded after each action, but just what needs to be changed at each step. Games often use this approach for storing replays, such as kill cams in first-person shooters, or the rewind mechanic in Braid. A downside is that to calculate an earlier state, you have to apply the differences all the way from the beginning to the state that you want. To optimize this, you can store intermediate states from which recalculation can begin, but since I don't need to be able to jump to a random point in history, I opted to instead store also backward differences, changes that need to be applied to a new state to arrive at an older one. This allows me to undo and redo actions simply by applying forward and backward changes. 
I'm currently in the middle of designing and implementing a version of this system that doesn't directly store differences as database operations. The details are still up in the air, so that's where I'll leave you this time. I'll see you in two weeks.